So let's talk about wrist positions because this is something that a lot of amateur golfers get wrong and it can actually really hurt your game, particularly if you start to over exaggerate the wrong positions. So first and foremost, what do we need to do? Well, we need to understand a little bit of terminology. Let's, let's stick to golfing terminology. So we have wrist cock, which is this motion here. And then what we also have is the kind of like a wrist bowing action, which is this type of flexing motion here. And then we also have the opposite to this, which is gonna be known as our sort of extensional cupping motion like this, right? And those are gonna be the three areas that we're gonna talk about because they're the ones that become most influenced depending on what you're overemphasizing. Now, the first thing to understand is when we hold the golf club, two things are gonna happen. One, when we position the club in the fingers and we get the uh, heel pad sitting on top, this induces an element of wrist cock immediately. So you can now see there's a difference between the angle of the shaft and the angle of my lead arm, therefore meaning that we're creating some of that wrist cocking motion in that set at position. And then the second thing is you need to understand that when we hold the golf club, there is a difference between the club shaft and the left arm in the initial alignment. And that's gonna be important when we talk about that sort of wrist bowing action or wrist hinging action, which is this motion here. Now, what I always say to all my students, and that's why I would say the same to you guys, is we need to make sure that obviously we don't have a real cupped left wrist position in the top of the backswing, right? Now, if you have a really strong grip, which means your left hand or lead hand is really sort of pronated and twisted over, then this would be acceptable for you to have a slight cupping in that wrist position. But if you are somebody who has a strong grip to a neutral grip to a weak grip, you don't wanna have too much of this cupping motion because it will create a little bit of steepness and it will also open that club face. So that's a big no-no. And that's why what I say to most of my students is look, once you've got the hold of that golf club, what you really wanna do in that first move is you wanna allow an element of wrist hinge. And that means the back of your trail wrist moving this way and the back of your lead wrist flattening out. And you wanna do it to the point where the left, if you hold the club out in front of you, similar to what I'm doing here, if I just introduce a bit of wrist hinge, see the way now it's gone missing underneath my left forearm, that means my club shaft and left arm are back in line and that is the necessary amount of wrist hinge. So if you sequence the golf swing correctly, you'll introduce a little bit of wrist hinge in that first move and then as you sort of lift your arms and turn your body, you'll sort of notice the way your left wrist is relatively flat, the club shaft should point down towards the target line. Great. We know that we don't want any excessive cupping because it opens the face and potentially makes us come down too steep as opposed to a flatter wrist. But what you've also got to be careful of, and this is like the new thing over the last few years, is overkilling the flexing move, right? So I meet a lot of people that think, well, if I just flex my wrist excessively, it will kind of close the face and it will solve a lot of my steepening problems. And it kind of really doesn't. Because like I said, if I do it correctly, so I get this backswing position, right? like so, it's easy for me to just drop my arms down that plane line, roll my arms to square the face and finish that through swing. If I start to introduce too much of this, should we say flexing wrist hinging action, then what will happen is the club is likely to get really laid off, okay, which will now mean as you start the downswing, you'll have to get it back in a steepening move to get it back on plane, which basically means that you're no better off really than having an excessive amount of cupping position. The other problem is that if you start to do lots of this wrist hinging action, you'd also really start to lose a lot of your wrist cock and it could become detrimental to things like distance as well. So the point of this is when we are holding the golf club, we want to basically take hold of the club. We introduce a little bit of wrist cock. We want to introduce a little bit of that wrist hinge I would suggest very early in the backswing to get the club shaft back in line with the left arm. And then from here, if you then lift your arms up as you turn, you'll get the club shaft on plane. You'll produce more than enough wrist cock coming in towards that backswing position. And these movements will give you the correct wrist positions. That's what you wanna work on. Avoid any unnecessary movement because it certainly won't help. And I'll see you guys again really, really soon. So hopefully you enjoyed the video, but let me tell you something. There's a much, much easier way for you guys to be seriously improving your game. And online lessons have never been any easier or any more affordable. 
If you head over to the website, you'll see examples of different programs that I offer, but I promise you, you'll be absolutely amazed at a couple of things. One, how easy it is nowadays to participate in online lessons. I work with students that send me videos from the course, that send me videos from the range, that send me videos from home. You'll be astounded how you're probably not doing the things that you should be doing and how helpful it will be for me, very much personally, myself, to keep a watchful eye on your progress. I've also got a video library and some structured content over there as well to help guide you on your way but keep watching the tips subscribe for more of those but like I say there is an easier way to ensure you're on the right path I'll see you soon